السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us and to grant us freedom from hellfire. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we have been combing through Surah Yusuf, trying to look at lessons that we can draw from that surah to implement within our lives, to be able to save ourselves from the calamities, the disasters within this world as well as the next. And we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of so many points. We've already spoken of a lot of the points. I want to start off this evening by making mention of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the forgiveness of the Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam towards his brothers. And thereafter the forgiveness of the father of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam known as Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam towards his sons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 92 that after these brothers had sought the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that after they had sought the forgiveness of their brothers, they asked Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, in fact, after they had asked Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam to forgive them, immediately he says, La it didn't take him a split second to say what he said. He says, no retribution or I hold no grudge against you today. Subhanallah. He says, I hold nothing against you today. No reproach against you today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for indeed he is most merciful, most beneficent, most merciful. If we take a careful look at this, they had done so much wrong to him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to destroy him one after the other. So many things happened to him in his life. But subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever makes mention of any point that indicates that Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was upset about his plight at any stage in his life. He was always a happy man, whether he was in the prison, whether he was in the pit, whether he was subhanallah, a person who was looked down upon because of a crime that he was accused about that he had not committed, no matter what it was. He was never ever upset. He was always a happy man. He seized the opportunity at every given time to make the most of it. He made the most of whatever condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him in. And I ask you to do the same. The reminder is for me as well. No matter what condition Allah has put you in, make the most of it. Make the most of it. Do not become depressed. Allah knows it might take 10 years, 40 years, 50 years. It might take 60 years. It might be an entire lifetime, but you will definitely see the results. If you are conscious of Allah, if you never lose hope in the mercy of Allah, you will definitely see the results. My brothers and sisters, this is a powerful lesson. Look at Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. If he wanted, he could have held a grudge. He could have held a grudge against his brothers and rightfully so because they did to him that which was unacceptable. He didn't hold that grudge because by holding a grudge, you are actually harming yourself. You are actually putting yourself down, your health, your sanity, your thinking, everything begins to be affected because you are holding grudges. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. It is up to us to forgive. We need to open our hearts. We would like the forgiveness of Allah. We should also learn to forgive people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us resolve the disputes that we may have. Imagine this was Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam. What a powerful lesson. Yet he was a beautiful man. On top of that, the brothers went back to their father. And when they went to their father, do you know what they said? Ya abana staghfir lana dhunubana inna kunna khati'een. Oh, our father, seek forgiveness for our sin. For indeed, we were the ones who committed sin. We were wrong. They had to admit finally. They had to admit they had to put their tails between their legs literally in our language and they had to come after years and confirm 
that you know what we did do this to Yusuf and we did actually lie to you and this is what happened and that's what happened the father did not want to hear the whole story this is why with us when we want to solve a problem sometimes it is not healthy to go back into the history you know I was born and when I was born I remember come on you are now 45 years old. We are trying to solve a problem here. Don't go back 40 years and start bringing back issues that happened perhaps in a previous lifetime. Subhanallah. Not according to the Muslimin though. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Obviously, my brothers and sisters, we learn from Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam's father. Immediately, you know what he says? سوف أستغفر لكم ربي إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. Verse number 98. إن شاء الله. He says, I will seek the forgiveness of Allah for you, for indeed He is most forgiving, most merciful. He didn't say, right, come here, tell me what happened. I'm going to sort you out. I'm going to fix you guys. You guys, I'm not going to talk to you for two years. Then we'll see about it. No, these were brothers. This was the father. There was a very big mistake. Allah created a situation whereby they had to admit. And when they admitted, you know what happened? The father forgave them and he sought the forgiveness of Allah for them as well. They lost approximately 40 years, according to some of the narrations. This whole episode lasted, according to some narrations, 40 years. Imagine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cleanse our hearts. My brothers and sisters, I want to say that it requires a beautiful heart to be able to do this. It requires a heart filled with the love of Allah more than anything else to be able to forgive. It requires a heart filled with concern for your family, concern for the ummah that would make you do this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse our hearts. The minute we have materialism in the heart, the love for wealth, the love for material items, the love for that which is going to be destroyed, then indeed we won't be able to forgive people. We will hold that grudge and we will make sure that according to us, we have sorted people out, not realizing that that would result in sorting ourselves out to begin with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lesson. And this is why towards the end of the surah, Allah tells us all, لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى verse number one 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 of Surah Yusuf Allah says indeed in the stories of these messengers there are lessons for those with sound intellect ulul albab those who have a brain those who want to use their mind well we have told you a lot of stories of the past in order for you to learn a lesson from for the rest of them who don't want to apply their minds as to how to draw the lessons from these stories it will just be a bedtime pastime you will just say wow it was lovely did you read the story of the prophet yusuf it is so beautiful did you see it and you drew no lesson from it you drew absolutely nothing from it my brothers and sisters we need to save ourselves from this we need to ask ourselves, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us these stories? He actually says, Ma kana hadith an yuftara. This is not speech that is fabricated. No, it is indeed the truth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us lesson. I want to move to the surah before surah Yusuf. There are two points I want to raise. Point number one is, a lot of the times we want the mercy of Allah and we want sustenance. Many of us, when there is no rain, there is a drought, we then cry. We say, Oh Allah, there is no rain, there is drought. The drought affects the economy. The economy affects our pockets. And sometimes we know perhaps there is a little bit of rain, but we're not doing well in terms of finance. You know, the world markets are actually rocked at the moment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. You know, when I was young, they used to say, how does that affect the price of eggs in China? Have you ever heard that? When I was young, they used to say that. Wallahi, today, someone can sneeze in the United Kingdom and they'll stop selling eggs in China. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. The world is a global village. A statement in the East will affect the people of the West. And a statement in the West can affect commodity prices in the East. Go and read the news and see what's happening. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. May He grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, Allah says, if you want goodness and the help of Allah, learn from the story of the Prophet Hud. Learn from the story of the Prophet Nuh. Here, Hud alayhi salatu wasalam tells his people when they wanted rain, he says, you want rain? Two things you need to do. You want power, you want sustenance. Two things you need to do. Hud alayhi salam tells his people, 
O oh my people, seek the forgiveness of Allah and repent to him. Seek the forgiveness of Allah is one thing and turning back to Allah is another thing. One is to say, Oh Allah, forgive me. Allah may forgive you. But the other is to change your ways and habits and go back to the straight path. That is called Tawbah. That is called returning to Allah, the path. So if you do both of those, Allah says here, Allah will open the skies and grant you rain and he will give you sustenance and he will subhanallah give you strength upon the strength that you have. But do not become from among the sinful, which means the quickest way to become rich. Guess what it is? To seek Allah's forgiveness. Astaghfirullah. Keep on repeating that. Keep on seeking Allah's forgiveness. You will become loaded. You will become rich, very, very wealthy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us wealth with barakah and blessings, not wealth that is going to come as a form of punishment to us. I mean, my brothers and sisters, a beautiful reminder. That's why I decided to go back and talk about it. You want wealth, you are searching to achieve it through haram means just because life is tough. Allah says, no, seek our forgiveness. We are the owners of sustenance. We will definitely give you that sustenance. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us thereafter in the same surah. And before I say what it is, I want to give you an example. You see, you have a young person in our society, say your own child or the child of someone, your brother or a person in the community and society. And you know what happens sometimes? They are extremely intelligent. They go through grade one, two, three, four, five, and they are first in class. MashaAllah, top. They come out from secondary school with the top results. And immediately in your mind, what do you think? Let's be honest. When you see straight A's, what goes through your mind? This child must become a, a what? A doctor. That's what I heard. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I said? This child must become a doctor. Why? Because he has straight A's. He's sharp. He's got a future. He's got everything. And you know what? Two years down the line, you see the same young man and he's walking. His clothing is just like, you know, a thobe. He's got a big beard. He comes into the masjid. No one even looks in his direction. And he's reading Salah in one corner. He sits to give a talk and five people are sitting in the talk and then he walks out. And then the uncle looks at him and says, or he greets someone, an old elderly man, Salaamu Alaikum. And he says, Wa Alaikum Salaam, your face looks familiar. He says, oh, you know, I'm Abdullah's son. Oh, Abdullah's son. What have you done to yourself? You were supposed to become a doctor, subhanallah. But they don't realize this man chose a path to please Allah. I am not saying do not become doctors, do not become accountants, do not become professionals. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying when someone has chosen a path that is the path of the deen, do not become upset. Perhaps that is their ticket to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You know, Saleh alayhi salatu was salam was one of those extremely intelligent. Everyone loved him. He was a child whom the community used to rave about, literally talk about. And one day he came in, he says, I'm a prophet of Allah. What you people are doing is wrong. And you know what? You cannot worship idols, sticks and stones, etc., etc. You've got to worship Allah alone. And everyone hated him and they didn't like him. And two or three people followed him initially. And they told him verse number 62. قالوا يا صالح قد كنت فينا مرجوا قبل هذا. O Salih, we had a lot of hope in you before you came up with this type of statement. We were hoping you would become some big shot in our society, and look at what you've chosen here. So this was the lesson. Remember what I just said moments ago? If Allah chose someone. You know, the best is to marry the two. Marrying the two meaning you work towards your dunya as well. And you also have a fair portion of your deen, bearing in mind that you are going to go into your grave and you also need to live on earth. So I need to be a brilliant Muslim who has sound knowledge and perhaps also a doctor. That would be the best of both, wouldn't it? But if someone has not had the opportunity to go out and study the deen so deeply, the minimum is they need to be brilliant Muslimin. So nothing wrong in being a top accountant, for example, but you're in the first saf in salah. For example, you are a person who completes the, the khatam or the recitation of the Quran. You sit in some of the lectures, you participate in Islamic activities. And at the end of the day, you are a top accountant. The whole world talks about you. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us such from amongst those whom those in the heavens are talking about. Like I said this afternoon, something very interesting. Some people are very famous on earth, but they are not known in the heavens. They have no deeds that they've done, but the world knows them. And some people, nobody knows them, but they are celebrities in the heavens because every few minutes their deeds are coming up. The angels know exactly who this is. Wow, another deed, another deed, another good deed. Whoa, another 10 deeds, another 20 deeds. Person, the world doesn't even know. They, like I said, they don't have WhatsApp. They don't have a phone to begin with. They don't even have internet to start with. Is it possible? The answer is yes, it's possible. So my brothers and sisters, remember, strike that balance. Save yourselves from this harm by getting to be known even in the heavens. Allahu Akbar. You know, something interesting that's just come to my mind now. They say the Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam, Yunus ibn Matta alayhi salatu wasalam. They say when he was in the belly of the whale in the darkness of the sea, right underneath the water. Do you know what? His voice was recognized by the angels, but from a different place. Every time he used to worship Allah and praise Allah, that voice was heard in the heavens. On that day, it was heard, but from a totally different place. Where was it? It was in the belly of a whale, in the oceans, in the water. And that resulted in him being saved. Subhanallah. It was a familiar voice. How many of our voices are familiar when it comes to the heavens? How many of us, the angels would actually know it's this worshiper again? Some of us, we are strangers. I think even if we say a few words, we might even be totally unknown. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Let's move on to the surah after Surah Yusuf, Surah Al Ra'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something interesting again, verse number 11. And this is also about saving ourselves. We've spoken in the past about how when Allah has bestowed upon you a goodness, He will not remove the goodness unless you deserve for that goodness to be removed because you have changed your ways and habits to transgress against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this verse, number 11, Allah says, Allah will not change the condition of a nation until each individual within that nation changes his or her own condition. Here, Allah is showing you the solution to the problems the Ummah is facing. When there is a problem anywhere across the globe facing the Ummah, yes, we need to rush to their assistance in whatever way we can, bearing in mind that the first thing to do is become steadfast yourself. If you are not steadfast, how can you help the rest of the Ummah? Or how can the help that you have rendered for the Ummah be of benefit? Some people donate a million rands only to find out a year later it was stolen by someone on the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Whereas others might donate 10,000 rands, 1,000 rands and the benefit of it has reached far and wide. That's the blessing of Allah. It's the taqwa behind it. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the sacrifice of Eid al-Adha. Allah says, Allah says, it is not the blood or the meat that gets to Allah from that sacrificial animal, but rather it is the piety of the individual who engaged in the sacrifice that will reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This means, what's the point of having slaughtered a thousand sheep but your life didn't change. You'd rather have slaughtered one sheep and change your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us change our bad ways. And then we need to know something. Those who break their covenant with Allah, those who say, for example, this is an example of breaking the covenant with Allah. I say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I bear witness there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets. But my deeds are heading in another direction. I'm not there for salah, not interested in giving up music, for example, not interested in, for example, uh, dressing appropriately, not interested in giving up the sins, etc, etc. What's happening? You have promised on one hand that you bear witness. You are bearing witness that he is the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you will get upset if someone says one word against him, but your whole life is against him. Where is the Iman? May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala strengthen us. So my brothers and sisters, <coughs> 
It's an extremely important point that we raise. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the messenger, we need to know he was sent in order to be followed. He was not sent in order for us to just say, yes, he's a messenger and we don't follow at all. No, he was sent in order to be followed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this. And this is why the curse is deserved by certain categories of people. You know, Allah doesn't curse in a rush, but Allah says, those are the people whom the curse is upon. Who are they? I want to save myself. I don't, I want to know who they are so that I am not from amongst them. Allah says they are the ones who break their covenant unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they are the ones who break family relations, who break the ties of kinship. That which Allah has asked you to join, you've actually ripped it apart. And they are the ones who spread facade, chaos on earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, this is a strong encouragement for us. Once again, saying, solve your family disputes. Every extended family has to have a few disputes, a few problems. It is your primary duty to work towards resolving the matters within your families for the sake of Allah, so that the curse is not upon you. You know, sometimes people say, no, it's his fault. I don't want to do anything. It's his fault. Hang on go out and try because how do you know you might just come on the day of judgment and judgment will be that it was your fault then what will happen too late rather i sort it out now sometimes when we say i am sorry we don't really mean that you know what i'm wrong here but we mean you know i apologize because for me to apologize is far more valuable i want to save this relationship the saving of this relationship is more valuable than me being correct. Subhanallah. I'd rather just say, okay, my brother, I'm sorry. It won't happen again, etc. I'm a happy man. I live with you, etc. Obviously, it depends what the matter was. It depends what the matter was. If it was a huge crime, you are not obliged to forgive. You don't have to. Someone has raped another person. You don't just say, my sister, forgive, forgive. Hey, that person needs to be penalized and punished. They may well go and do it to someone else. So you need to know what type of advice to give people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So we should be saving ourselves from the curse by protecting the covenant unto Allah. We made a promise that we are Muslimin. Fulfill it. At the same time, your family ties. Similarly, don't spread chaos and corruption on earth. Because if you do, then you won't be able to save yourself from this curse that is made mention of in verse number 25 of Surah Al-Ra'ad. Then there is a beautiful verse that a lot of us would know of by heart. Verse number 28 of Surah Al-Ra'ad. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ each one of us is searching for the heart to become calm. Each one of us wants the heart to be calm. We don't have that calmness sometimes. Allah tells you that calmness will only come through the dhikr of Allah, through the remembrance of Allah. The dhikr of Allah includes the recitation of the Quran, the adhkar that we are taught. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Remembering Allah when you want to sin so that you don't sin because you remembered Allah. Remembering Allah when there is a good deed to be done so you did it because you remembered Allah. All all this is included in dhikrillah so the verse means those who believe and they those who believe and they achieve the calmness of their hearts through the remembrance of allah for indeed it is only through the remembrance of allah that the hearts actually achieve that calmness did we learn something my brothers and sisters you want to protect yourself from this feeling that you are getting sometimes you cannot sleep and you are worried about the dunya, you are worried about everything, the whole world can wait. Allah comes first. Your relationship with Allah, if that is intact, don't worry about everything else. A day will come when you will die, leaving behind all those problems for others to now resolve. You are a person who's gone to Allah. Spend your days in the obedience of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ibrahim, which is the next surah, about the fact that every messenger who was sent was sent to his own people whose language he perfected and he knew 
And this is something interesting because if I want someone to understand me, I need to speak their language and I need to speak it clearly. Don't go out of your way to use difficult words just to prove that you know the lingo. When you know people are not going to understand what you're going to say or what you're saying. The primary aim is to get the message across. Use simple, clear terms so that the world can understand exactly what you're saying. When you speak, open your mouth. Speak clearly. Listen to the, the lesson we learned. Verse number four, Surah Ibrahim. Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ And indeed, we have never sent a messenger to a people except in the language of that people in order to make clear the message to them. Now, what I learned from this is Allah has bestowed upon us a tongue. He has taught us language in order to communicate. So when you speak, speak clear language. Did you know it is against the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to speak slang? Did you know that? It's against the Sunnah to spoil the language. May Allah forgive me. I'm guilty. At times, you know, we just say what we have to. And sometimes just to make a person laugh, etc. But if you want to maintain your dignity, your respect being intact, use upright language. And everybody will respect you because of the way you speak. Because of the language you use. It's very respectful, it's very clean, and it has no cheap words in it. That's what we learn. If the messengers were told, we will send you to a nation, you speak their language and speak clearly. That means I need to learn the lesson even more. I'm just a human being. And I need to know that for me to be able to communicate correctly, the same applies to every one of you. You need to speak clearly, clearly. You know, the worst thing, the worst thing that you can ever go through is when you are speaking to someone right in front of you and every little while you have to say, excuse me, excuse me. And they just don't know how to speak. You can't hear them until you tell them, huh? And then they repeat it loudly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excuse us. Wallahi, it is something disastrous. My brothers and sisters, let's learn to speak clearly. We save ourselves from what? From misunderstanding each other. From miscommunication. We save ourselves from so much negativity that may arise because we didn't talk clearly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. By extension, when you are messaging or when you are emailing, Make sure you do so clearly as well. Make sure the person understands exactly what you're saying. Make sure they understand what you're saying. Sometimes you send a message to someone in such abbreviated terms that they don't know what you're saying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I think we can relate to that more than we do the language, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. It shows us how far technology has gone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about that. And then I want to end with a beautiful verse. The verse where Allah makes mention of two primary qualities that are required in order to achieve the mercy of Allah, in order not to be prohibited from the mercy of Allah, in order to be protected from the wrath of Allah. You need two qualities in order to save yourselves from failure. What are these two qualities? So many places in the Quran, such as verse number five of Surah Ibrahim, Allah says, Indeed, these are signs for who? For those who have two qualities in them, sabr and shukr. And there is a difference between sabbar and shakur. Sabr means patience and shukr means gratitude or thankfulness. So Allah is saying these signs are appreciated by those who are sabbar. Sabbar meaning very, very patient. You know, sabir means a person who is patient once. Sabir, he is patient. But sabbar is it means every day they are patient for a long, long, long time. They keep on being patient and they bear the patience. Allah says, those are the winners. Allahu Akbar. Imagine it means you have calamity, another problem, another problem. It's like the mountains just keep on building, building and you're patient. Allahu Akbar. Allah says sabbar and shakur 
a person who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person who is always grateful. My brothers and sisters, no matter what difficulties you are going through on earth, concentrate on the positives. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has bestowed upon you. Start counting your gifts and you will realize they are innumerable. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.